Alright, and here we are with the next video in Chapter 2. Let's solve two-step equations, and that's with me, Mr. Hain. Alright, so the essential question that guides our, our video for today is, what does inverse operation mean, and how do I use inverses to solve equations? Okay, so, I cheated. It's the same thing as one-step equations, or solving equations, in the previous video in this playlist. Why? Because it's the exact same method. We're just adding a little bit. Now, fair warning, people, um, I do some stuff that it's kind of like what I like to teach in my classroom. So if some of this looks completely off, um, just know it'll get you to the right place. So away we go. Let's talk about example A, which is just simply solve this two-step equation. 2 times x plus 3 equals 7. 2x plus 3 equals 7. So um, the first thing I tell my students to do when I'm teaching them in 8th grade is to circle the entire side with a variable. Not just the 2x, not just the plus 3, but the entire side. Everything to the left-hand side of the equal sign, which is 2x plus 3. Okay, why do I do this? Because it helps focus our thinking to look into the circle and see what number are we adding and subtracting without a variable. And in this case, that number is 3. And the inverse of addition, which we see in our original equation, is subtraction, which is why I subtract 3 from each side of the equal sign. So 2x is now equal to 4, because 7 minus 3 equals 4. Same thing, and this looks like very much what we explored in the first video in this chapter. I have 2 times x is now equal to 4, and the inverse of multiplication is division. Divide both sides by 2. Boom. And that, of course, gives us, gives us x is equal to 2. So I have two problems for you guys to practice on. Um, the first one is example B, and that's 3x plus 2 equals 20. 3 times x plus 2 equals 20. And example C. 5 plus 2n equals negative 1, or 5 plus 2 times n equals negative 1. Go ahead and do these examples the same way that I did example A, or these problems, B and C. And I'll uh, go ahead and pause the video. I'll be here when you get back. So let's tackle some more, more two-step equations. So let's take a look at example D. That's uh, solve the following two-step equation. 25 is equal to 1 fourth times n minus 3 or 25 is equal to a 1 fourth n minus 3. All right, so I'm going to write the equation and circle the side with a variable. That's 1 fourth n minus 3. That's the entire side with a variable. Now that I've circled that side, uh, I can focus my thinking and see what number is being added or subtracted inside the circle. And of course, that number is minus 3. And the inverse of subtraction is addition, so I add that to both sides. 28 is equal to 1 fourth times n. And this is like the other equations in the previous video as well. Uh, I multiply times the reciprocal because now that is dividing with a fraction. So multiply everything by the inverse of 1 fourth, which is just 4. And that is 112. 28 times 4 is 112. That equals n. Uh, go ahead and uh, do examples E and F on your own, the same way that I did example D. Make sure to mind your signs when adding and subtracting with integers. Um, negative 1 it equals 1 half times A plus 9 is example E. That's negative 1 is equal to 1 half A plus 9. And example F to work out is 2 fifths times R equals, or I'm sorry, 2 fifths times R minus 5 equals 7. That's 2 fifths times r minus 5 is equal to 7, and that is example f. Go ahead and work those two examples out the same way that I did uh, example d, and I'll be here when you get back. Awesome. Even more two-step equations. I know I have a horrible singing voice. Uh, sorry. Um, so example G is 6 minus 3x is equal to 21. Um, and this is slightly different than our other examples because as I circle the side with the variable, what's being added or subtracted is the term with the variable, minus 3x. So I'm going to look at the number without the variable. And that number without a variable is 6. And of course, when I'm focusing it on that 6, it is positive 6. So the inverse of a positive is a negative number. So I subtract 6 from each side. That leaves me with negative 3x is equal to 15. I like to tell my students that the subtraction sign is also a negative. The 
operation is the sign of the number. Now, quick aside, by definition, the, de um, the definition of subtraction is adding the opposite. And so if we add the opposite of positive 3, of course, that becomes negative 3. Done. So that leaves us with the next step of our equation, which is negative 3x equals 15. I have multiplication, and the inverse of multiplication is division. So I divide both sides by negative 3. 15 divided by negative 3 is x equals negative 5. All right, so I've got three examples for you to work out on your own, h, i, and j. h is 10 minus 2 over 3 times p equals 52, or 10 minus 2 thirds times p equals 52. Example i is negative 19 is equal to negative 3x plus 2, uh, or negative 19 equals negative 3 times x plus 2. The final example on this one is j, which is n divided by negative 3 minus 2 equals 18, or n over negative 3 minus 2 equals 18. Awesome. So go ahead and pause the video. Uh, do these uh, h, i, j, just like I did g. I'll be here when you get back. All right, let's. I can't. I can't let something go by without throwing an application problem at you. And I know some people are looking at the word problem, going, "I can't solve this." You're wrong. Chicago's lowest temp recorded temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is negative 27 degrees. Solve the equation. They give it to you, people. They don't bury the lead. They give you the equation. It's negative 27 is equal to 1.8 times C plus 32. Or negative 27 equals 1 and 8 tenths times C plus 32 to convert the deg into degrees Celsius. Uh, so I'm going to use the equation. Circle the side with the variable. I'm adding 32, so the inverse of addition is subtraction. Uh, these are the same signs. They're both negative, so I add them up. 27 plus 32 is negative 59. Keep the sign of the larger number. And negative 59 is equal to 1 8th times C, or 1.8 C. Now I just divide by the coefficient of C, which is 1.8. 59 divided by 1.8 is 32, negative 32 rather, and 7 repeating. That's negative 32.7 with the bar on top. So I just write that with a bar, it's more exact. If you want to write negative 32 and 7 ninths degrees, that's even more exact. But that's, it's that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, just a quick application problem to tie the room together. Uh, if you are in my class uh, or you are watching this video at home, uh, go ahead and write your summary. Make sure your table of contents is updated. And even if you're at home, just following along in the comfort of your couch or your chair, keep doing the math.